Hello, I'm Ryan, this is Pablo, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, today we are going to be talking Pablo and van life. I think this is the video that everyone has been waiting for. So let me start by telling you what Pablo is. He's a Fiat Doblo, a 1.3, uh, uh, what do they call it, multi-jet engine, and a 65K mileage was on the clock when I got him. Which, to be fair, seemed almost too good to be true. Uh, when I first woke up one morning, I went on Marketplace, saw saw the Doblo on the sale, I think it was 1,700, it was on for and I thought even that seemed too good to be true. And it was up in uh, a dealership in Preston, so I gave him a call, everything was fine, seemed legit, hopped on a train, had a quick look around, a few things I, I spotted straight away was the um, front wing had a dent in it, the bed liner was covered in paint, so I didn't know what that was covering and also the there was no service history it was a 2007 van so i i looked at the mot history which you can now do online which is very handy and i just took the gamble uh bargained him down to about 1500 and took off the same day when i got home the alternator went which was a bit gutting i was a bit like here we go what have i bought called the dealership ship up and they were so kind so helpful they picked it up the same day took it back, got it repaired and dropped it off the next day, which was I was so grateful for, considering the, the price I got the van for. So yes, I definitely did buy it for 1,500, even though people don't believe me. It was last year during lockdown and people keep saying, how oh, can you afford, how, how have you managed to get it up for so low? It's gone up in price. Well, somehow it just popped up and these chances are available. Okay, so let's have to take you on a little tour. There you go, that's all you need to see. <laughs> Not a lot going on with the micro camper. Anyway, this is my sofa and it folds out to a bed, which I'll show you how I do in a second. This is the um, small bench that I made because I wanted to have two seating areas that were close to the windows. But in actual fact, the bench is too small and it now gets used as a footstool. So I might change that section. The doors I actually swapped over. They used to be normal van doors. There was no um, windows on them. So I swapped them out. I managed to find a taxi with windows. So I bought them. Uh, the cupboard space. This is one of my favorite bits. So this was actually built using some shelves. So they're these, you might have seen them in places. These shelves. They're just like wooden slats, about 10 pounds you could pick them up for. I used the excess cladding that kit, that I used to clad the van to uh, to make these cupboard doors, to make these side panels. And I used an old bed as to make the surface top. And I also used an old bed to make the, the actual bed as well. So that was very handy. I've got this shelf up here. Um, got like a jar just glued down. This is my drone charger. You can see there's one of my batteries. So that should just slot on. Probably won't do it now. Nope. Anyway, I've got jars here, which a bit hard to do around. Keep things in there, that's quite handy. That's my Sparky. Uh, I've got my carbon monoxide alarm hidden behind there. And this little cupboard, storage shelf here. A little cupboard here with more storage. Uh, utensils and things, my plug sockets, which I'll go through in a little bit about my electrics, curtains, and I've got my fridge here. So this fridge wasn't originally here. It's actually quite handy because I can access it from the front or from the back. It, it wasn't originally there, so that cupboard used to have full-size doors, and it was a lot, lot more neater and tidier, but I needed to fit the fridge in somewhere, and I couldn't compensate any sort of space around here. Um, okay, so this throw got from Amazon. I'm happy to post a link for you. The mattress itself was made from a an old memory foam mattress, 
which I cut up using a bread knife. I will post some pictures now and how I did that. And I got my mum to upholster it. She's not an upholster, but she does know how to use a sewing machine. So I bought the fabric from a place called Abacan Fabrics in North Wales and used that to make the cushions as well as the leftover pieces that I used to make the curtains and just bought some blackout liner for that. The cladding was all bought from Wix. I think you can get it from B&Q or some other places. That was a bit of a nightmare to fit, but I think it speaks for itself. It looks great. I've got it coming down a bit more one-sided. Um, I wanted to have more emphasis towards the left-hand side. So underneath, I've got plenty of storage space. So there's all my shoes under here. More lift-up storage. So that lifts up there. That's really handy. Under here, this is my little table. That should slot in there. Ooh. Won't do it one handed. That forms a part of the bed as well as uh, just a little table to use while I'm out and about. And then under there, I've got my water and some various other things. That's a fly zapper, not a mini tennis racket. A lot of people ask me how I cook. So I move this out the way and I have a little hidden shelf here. There's my Welsh slate that I got from Dunor at Quarry. So I use that as to put my um, camping hob on and then there's my coasters. So yeah, so I cook everything using that and I'll post a picture or a video of how I do that. These are my windscreen covers. So I use some old thermo lining that I had for the insulation to make these. And they've just got magnets on the back. That just slots on there quite nicely. Okay, let's try and make the bed and hopefully it goes smooth. So one section and the other section. There is a reason why they're split into two sections and that's because then I can open them up easily in two sections rather than lifting the whole thing. This is my table, it's sort of slots in between. That gap, then this cushion. Slots into there. Job's a good one. Yeah, finishing touch. You've always got to have a made bed. Perfect. And there you have it. Nice big double bed with storage space that you can still access underneath. Right, okay, let's try and answer a few of your questions. So, I put a post on my Instagram the other day on my story just to see if anyone had any questions about van life, I guess, and what I've done with Pablo. So, first question was, what was the most difficult aspect? Um, looking to do this in the next year or two. Okay, so the most difficult aspect. Um, I guess I have no experience in converting vans, so it was all a minefield to me. I had to do a lot of research and I'm quite indecisive. I feel like I need to know everything before I go ahead and do something. So learn all about the insulation, learning all about electrics and things like that was quite difficult. But once it's done, you kind of realize there wasn't much to it. Physically the most difficult thing was the cladding, as I've mentioned, nothing fits together. This van is built like a cone, it's shaped like a cone, it goes narrower towards the front, so nothing is straight, it wouldn't fit together, but it took a lot of swearing and things sort of came together eventually, so I'd kind of say that was the most difficult thing. Otherwise, just, just go for it. This was a cheap van, so I didn't mind making mistakes, and when I get a new van and I upgrade, I know what's right and wrong and what I've done. How many miles does it have and did it put you off? I'm currently van shopping. So the mileage is kind of neither here nor there for a van. The, the van that I got was 65K miles, which is really good. But I've seen people, you know, pushing for 200,000 miles. First thing I would recommend that you can do these days is go onto the government website and look at the MOT history. That's 
that's probably the best thing you can do. And as long as it's nothing scary on there and it's all general wear and tear, then go for it. But with any vehicle, it's potluck, you have no idea. How did you do the painting so cheap? So this is a controversial one. The amount of times people have seen my video and said, well, £1,500 probably got spent on the respray. Well, actually, no, it didn't. I spent about 100 quid. So I'm very fortunate my dad had a load of spray gear and we did it on my driveway. So that worked out perfect for me. I was able to just buy military vehicle paint and uh, some thinners and yeah, just went ahead. The color, if anyone is asking, is color vermilion, which sits between orange and red. The government wouldn't let me put that on the logbook, so it's down as red, unfortunately. You mentioned a tracker before in your stories. Got any recommendations? So, trackers are so important. I've seen twice in the last two weeks our uh, vans going being stolen. Why are people spending thousands of pounds and not getting a tracker put in? I have a Streetwise tracker. I'm not going to tell you where it is, but I've got one. You put, you buy a £10 SIM card, and just every now and again you have to text it just to make sure the SIM stays active. Hide the tracker, and for mine, all you do is you text it and it texts you back with the geo location tells where it is. You can also set geo fields and things like that. I'd also say if you have an old phone, sometimes that works. People tend to put in old iPhones and then you can do the find me iPhone thing as long as it has signal. So yep, there is that method. What insulation and vapor barrier did you use? Okay, so I said that I used YouTube for a lot of the things that I've learned. And one of them that kept coming up was Valley Campers or something like that, I think they're called. Um, I'll give them a little shout out. They recommended Dodo, which I'm sure maybe they were sponsored to do it, but either way, I didn't mind paying extra for it. So I think I, I'll, I'll use a link just to show you exactly what it is and I'll post a load of pictures of how I did it. But basically I used um, uh, sound deadening, vapor barrier, and then recycled plastic insulation for that um, exterior. And then obviously, as you see, I've cladded the van. I didn't want to use carpet. I, I'm no problem with anyone else using it, I just didn't fancy, it wasn't my style. What is your solution for internet access? So for the internet, I was quite lucky when I went away. During COVID, EE are offering unlimited data allowance for whatever your data package is. So for me, I have 150 gig, and there was only one month that I went over that, and that's because I just used a lot, downloaded Netflix videos and things like that. But there's one tip in itself. Netflix and Spotify do allow you to download things before you go. So wherever you are on the road, if you're using Wi-Fi and things like that, try and download any music, any podcasts or, or movies, and then you've got them there to watch as long as you're, the country that you're in allows that. I, I, I think that they can block it, I'm not sure. Um, how do you manage water and waste? Okay, so um, in terms of water, as you saw in the video before, I do have a 12 litre um, container and I'll post an link, Amazon link to that. With showering, I do have a portable shower, but when I was away, I only used it once. I tend to just find campsites, wild swimming and things like that. Toilet, I'll post a picture of the toilet, not of me using obviously, I'll use, push, post the link. I have a collapsible toilet in case of emergencies. As a guy, we can pretty much go wee anywhere, it's pretty handy. The public toilets, Europe is terrible for public toilets. They're either not signposted, they are hard to find, or they just don't exist. So it's a real pain when you're in Europe. UK is probably a little bit better, bit better signposted but still I think the world could do with more public toilets I think we are terrible in that sense how hot is it inside so I didn't install uh, an air vent in the back and it was too late after I'd cladded it I don't uh, I can open the back doors but it doesn't make much of a difference if it's you know really humid I can also open the front door windows to the point to a certain point because I have wind deflectors it does get hot and if it's above 30 degrees, I just tend to just leave the van for the day in some shade and just go do something else. There's no point trying to get it to cool down because it won't. I also painted my roof black, which looks great, but isn't gonna be great in the summer. Tell me more about beautiful paint job. Okay, so I think I pretty much mentioned that, but also um, I used a company called Trade for Paints. They sell military vehicle paint. That worked great for me. It was white. Um, one thing I'd also add is it takes about three to four weeks, I think, to get your logbook back once you change the colour, but it doesn't cost anything. So that's good. 
How comfortable is it sleeping in the back? Um, the person mentioned about um, having below two meters. So I'm five foot eight. The, I'm probably gonna have a few people laugh at that. I am five foot eight. Um, with the bed pulled, uh, sorry, with the seat forward, I can just fit in fully, uh, full length, full stretch. Um, apologies, I got cut out there. So I was just saying, that, yep, full stretch is fine. This goes to about 1.8. The width is no problem. I can get in here comfortably and same, I could probably get another person in here as well. That's fine. The, I've been asked again about mileage, what, what mileage Pablo is and this person's worried about do it, anything over 150K. A car can fail at 10K, a car can fail at 150K. The important thing is to just look at what the MOT history is. If there's just general wear and tear, then that's pretty standard. If it's anything more, then yeah, maybe be a bit more cautious. Okay, what do you do with electricity and what do you do with longer trips with no access to electricity? So that's a great question. So I have a 12 volt system that I paid someone to put in. I didn't have the skills or knowledge. Well, maybe I did, but I just wasn't brave enough to do that. I didn't want anything to go wrong with the electrics. Now that it's been done, it's relatively easy. I'd be quite happy to do it myself since. The 12 volt system is great, but I also have an inverter, which I'll post a link to. And in that inverter, I have an extension lead to run any sort of plug so normal plug sockets for my 240 system, like for example, my laptop and my drone charger and things like that. Um, I, when I'm off grid, I do have a portable solar panel, which I'll also post a link to. That mine, I think is a 220 watt, but the great thing is about it is that I can put it in my windscreen, so it'll act as a windscreen cover, and I can leave it inside without it gets stolen. I didn't want to have a permanent one fixed as I just wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to do with that. So that worked best for me. Did you know anything about vans before you converted? No, I'd had zero experience with converting vans or anything like that. My dad knows a little bit about cars, so I had some help there, and my brother's a laborer, so I had a bit of advice, but but that was all. Um, most of it I learned off YouTube and that's probably your best friend. There's loads of advice out there. Also Facebook groups, there's a lot of Facebook groups and people can give a lot of advice. But for me, I have a 1,500 van. It's not the most expensive thing if I did something wrong. And that was the aim for me to sort of make mistakes on this and then I'll feel comfortable with stepping up to a bigger van. Um, fair play to a lot of people that go straight for these 20,000 pound vans and just convert it themselves. That's a, a lot of pressure on your head. But yeah, so that's all the questions. Um, I hope that's covered everything for you. If there's anything that I've missed out, please feel free to drop me a message on, drop me a message on Instagram, follow me, at, you know, any sort of comments are always welcome and I can try and answer as many as I can for you. So yeah, thank you.